Happy Boga, Tava no Leg. Please feel free to ask questions. 
is also for the actors too, and, and any production people. My, my, I'm not gonna answer the question. <laughs> um, my favorite part of the movie are when Jean and Zoinks are after Coney Island, when you start to see them walking and talking in their relationship in this kind of beautiful, we're in it all, you know, we're really in it now way. That's, I'm so moved by that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my favorite part is when Zylar gives her scarf a ride. <laughs> uh, I love when one of the men in black tells the other one that uh, he too was a little mermaid. <laughs> This time, I don't have really different favorite parts, but this time it's the bicycle scene, that long, long shot of Jane riding on a bicycle. I just think it's beautiful. Um, I guess mine is when she says she has to leave and go back to her planet because I cry a lot. <laughs> I know it's a comedy, but I've been through a lot. And I just Ties it in there, but that's just 
totally subliminal for the rest of the audience. You're not even supposed to know that. <laughs> supposed to work on you on subconscious so <laughs> But I'll invite you to give a lecture on it. <laughs> Excellence. 
Uh, so every everything I wanted to work on from the initial first cut, I addressed. So that was a way of coming to closure with it. That and I had to give the movie over. So. <laughs> what we think, and you know, Lisa's wonderful performance, um, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about how you approached the role or anything, but part of it is, it's kind of amazing, you, since you don't see this kind of story that often, it's, it provides this kind of affirmation, um, um, but just talking a little bit how you approach the role. Yeah. Um, uh, for what, well, no, no, I guess from a place of realism, you, uh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure everybody's been lonely, and I've been lonely, and, and they've gone on tons of personal ad dates, and you meet all these weird people, and you don't connect with people, and, and that, that's, a, that's a real brag, so I guess those are some of the things I thought of when we were shooting the film, and, and then how exciting it was to meet with somebody that you connected with, and also liked you back as well. So I guess that was going through my mind, you know, playing the character and stuff like that. Or that's uh, thank you so much for, for your for your um, in the last room. Yeah. What were the last you know, the last scenes you actually shot? What, what were you filming in with the sort of in the back process of the movie? Well, um, the there were a couple things. One was um, there was one we, we actually reshot the the revolving cheesecake uh, scene. <laughs> The, the first location we were in had really horrible sight lines. We couldn't really stage it the way we wanted to. So we went to this other place where actually, like, they just, it was outrageous. They just loved us there. Like, they could have had us there for three days and for feeding us for free. And both of the managers wanted cameos. And that's how that guy with that funny accent was up. He insisted he was really upset again the, the day. He was like, yeah. The, be the beginning of that scene, the camera pans, and you see one manager who's just at the cash register, but the other manager was really upset that the first manager got to be in the movie. He wasn't going to be in the movie. So we had to shoot that whole scene. Uh, thank you, thank you. I didn't even think I was going to use it. And then I turned around the editing room and was like, oh, great, I'll put that in during this, this, this uh, dialogue exchange. Um, so that was like a reshoot. And then there were, um, we needed to con sort of contextualize a little more of Jane's life at the stationery store, and we added that. The, the cranky uh, senior gentleman customer. Um, so we got a sense of how she would sort of be open to, to meeting Zoinks when Zoinks does come in. So we, we shot a lot of those scenes until the, the statement story actually had it. One point we had this sort of this anal probe subplot that ended up getting cut from the movie because we could never we could never realize it and we had the scene where the, the senior customer was saying, they always gave me an anal probe and, and the people in the stationery store were like, goodbye, you don't want to see me anymore. Um, so there were those scenes and then another thing that we needed to do was make sure that we charted the point of, um, of showing Zoinks's, initially the idea of Zoinks is sort of going through the steps because she's given this mission of having to fall in love and she's doing this, she's asking her to the movie, she's giving her the love card, she's doing these things. But then at a certain point it's like it catches up to her and she realizes like, wow, I'm really, she's really falling in love. So we had, we shot those scenes, scene where she's eating the Chinese food in bed, where they're walking together, just like little moments, but they were very important to sort of chart this journey and to see her falling, you know. They do call, and uh, I was, it was, I was, couldn't believe it, really. I mean, we didn't, we just sent it in, and we, we didn't hear anything. We didn't assume to hear anything except to get, you know, to get a rejection or whatever. But uh, we were just totally delighted and surprised, couldn't believe it. Um, and we haven't, we literally just finished right before Sunday. We finished um, on uh, Monday, and then Tuesday we printed, this is this last week of this we, what was the weekend? I can't remember. We finished on the the day I went on the plane. I took the tape off the plane. I took the tape off the plane. I was like, don't put it in the metal detector. It's okay. But 
but uh, so we just finished literally we'll be submitting to film festivals now, yes. So one more question in the back. Well, that's, um, it is the alien speaking backwards. Um, we did reverse the tape. Uh, it involved uh, some very creative editing. I don't think that here's Curtis and Dave. And um, it was, so that was, the idea is like, we, it's nice to see people actually talking and uh, hearing it. Um, but that was the idea. At one point, um, uh, at one point, Curtis had subtitled the entire movie. <laughs> Every scene with the aliens on Earth where there were no people around was backwards. Uh, we tried that. That seemed like a little too much. Um, and then we decided just that they would, you know, of course, speak on their planet in alien language. And then when they got here for the sake of the mission, they would be speaking in English uh, to each other. Thankfully for you all. <laughs> Uh, yes, well, um, I have three projects, and uh, I, I don't like to talk about them so I can maintain my mystique. Um, so, but I am working on some projects. But then, thank you so much for asking for more movies. We'll work on more movies. Um, so, to, I guess I'm sure you'll tell me when we're wrapping up. But one more question, I guess. Well, that he that agent was uh, he was part of. They mentioned at the very end. It's, I know people some might miss it. They're sort of like a safety patrol of aliens who protect other aliens who are coming to Earth. Um, and when I was reading about uh, men, the Men in Black uh, folklore, it's not just a Will Smith movie. That's actually based on these these stories in the sci-fi community. People. Uh, uh, would tell stories of, you know, when you would see an alien, these, these government officials, usually wearing sunglasses, would come up and visit you and sort of threaten you not to, to tell anyone. Um, and then at one point, there were rumors in, in the sci-fi community that these government agents were actually themselves aliens. So that they were not, they were suppressing the stories of alien visits, actually not for the government, but for other aliens. Um, so I read it and I decided that to be my sort of secret backstory that I worked off of. Um, and um, it was very, that was another part to answer the question about, we, we tried and tried to have that as uh, more of an explanation. The more we explained it, the more people got confused. Wait, the alien? The covering it for the alien? Like, just like, forget it, forget it. It was like, just show, show him protecting Jane and covering up and helping her escape to the spaceship and then that part became clear of it. So that was inspired for me secretly by these, by these stories. Um, at one point we were going to have actually that the senior agent didn't realize that the entire staff of the government agency was aliens and he was the only one and that's why he put them in class and everything. But, um, but we decided to keep it simple. Yes, the, the, on the subject of the, the government agents. So the, the rookie agent, who's the alien character, he's like a, he's like a seer and an innocent. Um, and the, there were a couple lines in the beginning, some were left over. The senior agent's always talking about his wedding. He's talking about his wedding and Debbie, you know, how happy he is, he's so happy to be married to him. And the, the alien agent can't, kind of can't put this together because but he's seeing something about the senior agent that the senior agent can't see about himself, which is that, that he is a gay man. Um, so when he's asking, he's asking the question in all innocence. I can see he's read the bullet points, he knows, you know, there's no gay marriage, there's no gay marriage in New York. I'm trying to understand how he's married. Um, and for me, the, um, the end, there's a kind of a disingenuous